Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Plan T Part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. I have gone through the reproduction, the characteristics of algae. Let us see what is the significance of algae. Why, why uh, do we need to classify them as a separate group? What are the advantages of algae? The first advantage is carbon dioxide fixation on earth. The very important or the most basic characteristic of an algae is that they are autotrophic. That is they can perform photosynthesis in presence of sunlight. And what happens in photosynthesis? In photosynthesis carbon dioxide is utilized along with water and sunlight to produce food in the form of glucose. So it actually helps in carbon dioxide fixation on earth. It maintains the balance of carbon dioxide on the earth. Increase in oxygen level in atmosphere because the as a product of photosynthesis oxygen is produced. So more and more oxygen is produced as a result of the process of photosynthesis. Therefore, it increases the level of oxygen in the atmosphere. It is an important source of food. Now, since they can prepare their own food, so one thing is that they are dependent on themselves for their food. But at the same time, they act as food for many other organisms. Like whatever other organisms which, have, which are there who cannot prepare their own food, they depend on the plants which prepare their own food. So algae act as an important source of food, not only for themselves, but for all other organisms. Some of them are very rich source of proteins. Like you will see that sometimes when people fall sick or uh, when people become, tend to become weak, there are no uh, nutrition in their body. They are often advised to take more food, more having more of uh, the nutritious things. For example, protein. Now, some of the algae like chlorella and spirulina, they are rich source of proteins. Which are they? They are chlorella spirulina these are rich source of proteins so here you can see them in the form of tablets so that people can have them to increase the protein content in their body preparation of ice creams and jellies now there is something called agar which is obtained from an algae called gelidium and gracilaria so from these algae, agar is obtained and agar helps in preparation of ice creams and jellies. Have you ever tried to prepare ice cream or jelly at your home? If you try to do that, you will see that you need a lot of ingredients for that. I mean, you just cannot prepare it just like that. So you need this agar for preparation of these kind of stuffs. So algae plays an important role even there. So these are some of the uh, significance of algae. So with this, now we will try to study about the subclassification of algae. Now, even in algae, it is not, we have, however, discussed about quite a, a good number of algae, but still it was seen that the variety of algae was huge. It was not only the green algae which were present, but there were some algae which were, which were red or brown in color. So based on the color of the algae, they were divided into three types. That is chlorophyce, pheophyce, and rhodophyce. So these were the three subclassification of algae. So now we will see what was the basis of classification. The one basis was the color of each of them is different. Now why was their color different? Because of their chemical composition. The pigment which were present in them are different. So because of different pigments, they have different colors. Okay. So before we talk about the three types of algae, let us quickly talk about the photosynthetic pigments because I, as I said, presence or absence of the pigments is one of the most primary factor for subclassification of algae. So we should first know what are these photosynthetic pigments before we go ahead with the subclassification. Talking about the photosynthetic pigments, the first thing that comes to our mind is chlorophyll. We all know that chlorophyll is the pigment because of whose presence the plants are green in color. 
So this chlorophyll pigment is predominant in leaves. That means it is not that only chlorophyll is the pigment that is present on leaves, but there are some other pigments as well. But chlorophyll dominates. That is the amount of chlorophyll which is present in leaves is more than any other pigment. pigment and that is why the leaves are green in color. Now the question is, why is it that due to the presence of chlorophyll, the color of the leaves become green or why is chlorophyll green in color? That is an important question. That's because this pigment chlorophyll has a property that it absorbs the light energy strongly in the red and violet regions of the spectrum. We all know the spectrum, right? What are the different colors that we have in the spectrum? Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. So these are the different colors that we have in the spectrum. If I talk about chlorophyll, it absorbs light strongly in the red and violet regions. That means it absorbs these colors more. So now when it absorbs these colors more, what is the color that it doesn't absorb? The middle one, that is green. So that is why since it doesn't absorb the green color, all other colors it absorbs. So what is left out? Green. So the green color is reflected and transmitted and that is why we see it as green. Now whichever object, let us suppose there is an, uh, an object lying in front of you which is red in color. That means that it absorbs all other colors except red and that is why red is being transmitted. So we see it as red. So similar is the case with chlorophyll as well. So it is that due to the presence of chlorophyll, more chlorophyll, the leaves are green in color. Now in chlorophyll also we have many different types of chlorophyll on the basis of their structure. So when, when you actually look at the chemical structure of a chlorophyll, you see that it is a quite complicated structure. And that too the structure, there are many different types of chlorophyll. So that is why we have chlorophyll A, B, C, e, even in C you have C1, C2 and things like that. And all of them have got different structures. So here you can see the structure of chlorophyll A, B and C. They look quite different from each other. We do not want to, I do not want to scare you with these structures, but just want to tell you that because we will now be using these terms, chlorophyll B is present, chlorophyll A is absent. So you might be wondering what is chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B. So that is why I told you. The next type of pigment that we need to talk about is carotenoids. So what are carotenoids? These are pigments whose color ranges from yellow to red. So these are colored pigments which are present in plants. These are predominant in flowers and fruits. So that is why you would have seen that in a plant, the leaves however are green in color, but the flowers or the fruits, they are colorful. And their color is because of the presence of these carotenoids. Now why are carotenoids so colorful? Because they absorb light in the blue region of the spectrum. So somewhere here. So it absorbs light somewhere in this region. So when it absorbs light in this region, all other colors from here, they get transmitted. So we see it as yellow, orange or red because it absorbs in this region, blue, indigo, violet, they are all similar colors. So it absorbs those colors. So the colors which are transmitted are red, orange or yellow. So it absorbs light from those region of the visible spectrum which are not covered by chlorophyll. As, as in, in, in the visible spectrum, some light are absorbed by chlorophyll, some region is left out by chlorophyll. So to, in, in that region, it again takes up that blue region. So the transmitted one is yellow, orange and red. Now, carotenoids and chlorophyll, both are present inside the plant. But the part of the plant where chlorophyll is more, that will appear green. That part of the plant where carotenoids are more, they will appear colorful, maybe yellow, orange or red. So now, the presence of these carotenoids are, is the reason for these colors of different vegetables and fruits and flowers. The red color of a tomato or the orange color of a carrot or um, a flower, a rose. So all these colors come from the presence of these carotenoids. Now in this carotenoids again, there are two types of pigments which are present. One is called carotene and the other one is called xanthophils. Now carotenes are the pure carbohydrates and xanthophils are the carotenoids with oxygen. So carotenes are basically without oxygen and xanthophils are the ones with oxygen. So basically this classification is done based upon their structure. So these xanthophils 
are generally yellow in color the xanthophylls are generally yellow in color so not only these pigments there are many other pigments like fucoxanthin phycoerythrin and many other pigments which also fall under the category of carotenoids now because of the presence of carotene the carrot is known as carrot and that is why it gets its orange color so these are some of the important photosynthetic pigments so now once we have little idea about these pigments Thank you. Please visit www.examphio.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.